Good morning. Welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Church. Today we are celebrating the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and the readings can be found on page 1166 of your red worship hymnal. Our opening hymn is also in the red hymnal, number 574, All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 574. Please stand. Cheers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And your spirit. You probably hear our sound system is not working very well this morning. It's sort of a failure, total systems failure. So we are, we are looking into it, so I'll just try to speak a little louder this morning. As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. You alone are the Lord. You alone. 
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation, and hold to my covenant. Them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did, Je and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. We're given this very beautiful gospel today, beautiful, beautiful, but yet very troubling, especially as we see the way that Jesus at least appears to be treating this Canaanite woman who's entreating him on behalf of her daughter. And yet we hear him say things like, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, dot, 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 not you. It, it's not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs or his silence beforehand. It's troubling language that we're hearing coming out of Jesus' mouth. And, and so we, we're meant to kind of to wrestle with that. But in order to, to properly in, interpret any scripture, we always need to look at the whole of scripture. So this, this individual Part of the gospel seems to seems to be demonstrating Jesus as very restrictive, as as aligning only with a certain group of people. But of course, we know we look at the whole of his life, and indeed, the whole all of the scriptures, New Testament and Old Testament. There we see Jesus, who of course is incarnate God, revealing always in the, the greater picture that he is for everyone. <laughs> that, that's the part that the great mystery, he is for everyone, for all. We see that when he's on the cross, when he's pouring his life out, we see that when he is gathered with his disciples, we're going to be hearing those words today, take this all of you and eat of it, this is my body given for you, that's for all of us gathered here. We take this, this is, my, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which we, will be poured out for you and for many. It reminds us it's not just for us, but for more. And of course, that many is also not restrictive. It's meant to be for all. All are invited to come to participate in, in all of the riches of the Lord, what the Lord desires to give. So what are we, what are we to make you know, of these words of Jesus? And of course, the, there is there's a, there's a kind of a truth that's coming out, even though it's a little bit twisted. Israel was some of God, was God's chosen people, and indeed is still God's chosen people, his, his little nation that he took to be his own, to manifest who he was. But of course, the reason he did that ultimately, and this is all throughout the Old Testament, was so that he might reveal to the nations, a.k.a. everybody else, who he is, 
how good he is. That in fact that he is for everyone. That's, that's always been a part of God's plan. But we know that it, it can be, it's part of human nature sometimes. And I'm sure we've all experienced it, even in ourselves, certainly from others. When we start to get that, a little bit of pride, when we start to get a little bit of attention where our egos are stroked a little bit, there's always that temptation to begin to think, we, we are it, you know. We are the special ones. And, it, and you can see that in a, in a very human way, and we know that it, in, in a very real human way, that did creep in to the minds and hearts of some of the Israelites who were living during this time, some of the Jews who were present. And they would even, it's, it's, it's documented, they would sometimes call those who are outside of Israel, they would refer to them as dogs. And you can imagine that that's so restrictive to what God wants to do. It holds back the mercy of God, his desire to share his life with everyone. And so here, what we're, part of what we're seeing happening is that reality. God, in a way, is kind of butting up against the the thoughts of those who are surrounding Jesus, Jesus who desires to share his life with everyone. He knew what was in the hearts and minds of his disciples. It's they who came to him, send her away, you know, this, this woman who's just troubling us. But yet there, there's this beautiful interplay that takes place. We know that Jesus knows what's going to happen. It's not a, a tremendous um, it's not a, a huge surprise to him. But beautifully, this woman who comes in that with great desire, seeing Jesus for who he really is, God, who desires to manifest his mercy for everyone, she in a way enters into play with him, continues, I know that you are going to show mercy to me. And then that wonderful line, even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. She knows that the mercy and the riches that the Lord is bringing is, is far greater than anything else anyone had imagined. She sees who Jesus is. And so the Lord responds, great is your faith, a faith that sees more deeply that all of these other disciples, even who are around me. And of course, what do we see there? We don't, do we see Jesus restrictive? Like, I, I'm still not going to share anything with you. But no, the, the full riches, everything, my whole life is given for you. And we, we see it, of course, in the healing of her daughter. But it's this explosion of life for everyone. That's what God desires, this sharing of his life. He so deeply desires it. Now, for, It's for us to be attentive to, to, to this great desire of God to share his life with us. He desires it so much. But we also need to be aware of some of those pharisaical um, words that may be even within us that speak to us and say, I'm not worthy. I, I, I'm not one who God, why would God want to share his life with me? And of course, we, we pick those things up when we grow up, and sometimes they simply come from within. And it's important to be attentive to those, because those are, those are our pharisaical tendencies that are not from God. God desires to share his life with us. And so we're meant to see that this beautiful woman's faith that says, share with me the abundance from your table. Give me everything. I want to share in your life. The problem is not the generosity of God, it's, it's the generosity of, of our asking, to ask generously. Now, I'm preaching here, of course, to myself and to all of us to be very generous 
in asking from the Lord. He wants to share our life, his life with us, and the fullness of his life. So I just want to share a, a little way in which my own faith has been strengthened in hope that it might share, um, strengthen all of our faith a little more deeply in, in the goodness of God. In these last number of months, I had been asking God for a special favor. Of course, I'm always praying, always praying for all of for us and for those. I know that there's great need always in our parish. But I think many of us know that I'm uh, a part of a secular Franciscan fraternity. So I'm a Franciscan and I meet with a fraternity regularly. And I felt inspired to ask for a relic of St. Francis of Assisi, a first-class relic, which would be a part of his body so that we would, so that we would know how to be closer, that, that, we, that we'd experience more deeply a closeness to St. Francis, who, of course, is one of the saints who leads us closer to Christ more, more deeply. And I just felt inspired it would be so helpful for us to have that gift. So I was begging God, and this is what I told him, is that I have no idea how to get a relic. I've never received one before. I don't know what kind of process there needs to happen. So you have to do this for me. You have to do it, God. So you do it. And a a couple of months later, one of my priest friends called me up out of the blue and said, John, I, I have this relic of St. Francis. It's a first-class relic. We were cleaning out someone else's house, or someone was cleaning out their house after their parents died, and they found this relic. And I thought of you, and I'm wondering if you would like it. And I said, yes, I would love that relic. I would love it. And, and, um, and of course, I received it, and it's a tremendous gift in and of itself. But afterwards, just taking it to prayer, what the Lord has been speaking to me, you know, it, it's such a, in a way, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's also a little thing. You know, it, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a, a tremendous healing. It's not a, there, it's, in a way, it's a little thing. But what I heard spoken to me is like, see, I, I love you even in this little way. <laughs> I'm so generous. I, I want to give you whatever you ask of me. And that's true for all of us. He desires that we would know how good and generous he is, that he wants to share the whole of his life with us. And yes, of course, we, we all know it's true that sometimes we don't receive what we ask for. And we, in, in a way, we have to receive that too. It's a part of God's love. But he does want to shower us with his love, with his mercy. He is not restrictive. Every one of us here is deeply in his care. And so he asks us you know, to keep asking to receive generously from him.
for the church that we may always reach out to those who have been slighted, alienated, or rejected so that all may feel welcome in the church we call home. We pray. For peace among all nations and peoples, that we may abandon weapons of war and embrace nonviolence. We pray. For those who have journeyed here from foreign lands, that they may find welcome and acceptance. We pray. That we may value human life at every stage and in every condition, we pray. For those who suffer from chronic illness and for their caregivers and their loved ones, we pray. For the special intentions in our parish, for those who are sick or homebound, especially Jen Neurer, Joanne Chimperly, and Don Holton, father of Michael Holton, for those who have died, and for the people of this parish for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray. Our preparation hymn is number 417 in your blue gather. We remember number 417. We remember how you love.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of Jesus 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Our communion hymn is number 589 in your blue gather, All Who Hunger, number 589. Truth we will be found. 
We have just a couple of announcements. We invite, we invite everyone here to take a Synod prayer card home today, which can be found on the table in the gather space. And then, of course, in, you're invited to pray it daily. It's just a way of inviting the Holy Spirit into all that's being done through our archdiocese at the invitation of the Archbishop, especially as we are preparing for um, initiating small groups in our parish and, of course, in small groups throughout the entire diocese. There's also a sign-up sheet for anyone interested in learning more about becoming a small group leader by attending training sessions this coming fall. It's also time to register for our Religious Ed, Confirmation, First Reconciliation, and First Communion programs. You can register for those online by going to our IHM website. There are more details in the bulletin. This January, January 1st through 5th, I'm going to be taking some of our college students to an annual conference called SEEK that's put on by FOCUS. So if just it's, go, it's a, a huge conference, 16,000 students come, and uh, with some of the, the biggest Catholic names out there, uh, a great experience of deepening of faith, a deeper encounter with our Lord Jesus. So if, if anyone here knows of a college student who might be interested, let them know and reach out to me. I'm going to be meeting with a, I'm going to be meeting over Zoom on September 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, to talk more about the details, but we'll have more information coming out in the coming weeks. Our volunteer appreciation pig roast is this Wednesday, August 23rd. Again, all are welcome. And there are more details in the bulletin. 
then finally, all are welcome to, to join Michael and myself. Even though he's not here today, he'll be around this, later this afternoon for Ultimate Frisbee at 2 p.m. in the soccer field. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is in your blue gather, number 524, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, number 524. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury or pardon, Lord And where there's doubt, true faith in you Make me a channel of your peace Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope where there is darkness, only light, and where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console. We are.